So this video, we're gonna be talking about a constant rate of change. Um, in the example they give you, it says Emily just got a job at Starbucks. They agreed to pay her $12 per hour. Complete the table and graph based on this information. So I can see that for in one hour, she made $12. So wages is just what they're paying her. So wages is in dollars. Okay, so one hour she gets $12. In two hours, she would get 12 times two, which would be $24. In three hours, she would get three times 12, which would be $36. And in four hours, she would do four times 12, which would be $48. So if I go ahead and I graph these over here, okay, one hour, so this is my X, it comes first, and then my Y um, is my wages. So when X is one, when she works one hour, she makes $12. So one and 12, okay? When she works two hours, she's going to make $24. So I'm gonna go over to two and then up to 24. When she works three hours, I go over to three and up to 36. And then when she works four hours, going over to four and up to 48. And if we take a closer look at these points, we can see that they are forming a line, okay? And that's not a mistake. That should be happening, okay? Notice, as the hours increased, okay, the hours always went up by how much? They always went up by one, okay? Every time that increased by one, what happened to the wages? What happened to the Y? It always went up by what? 12, because 12 plus 12 is 24. If I add another 12, I get 36. Another 12 gives me 48. So as the hours increased by one, the wages always increased by 12. When both quantities, X and y have a constant that means the same okay it's not changing okay rate of change so every time okay it went up by one here it went up by 12 okay if both of these are constant then they are defined as having a linear relationship okay and you can see in the word linear the word line and um, linear relationships will graph as a line right which is what ours did here when we plotted our points all right, so constant rate of change, this rate of change right here that we've noticed, is what determines if points will form a line. And the rate of change is written as a fraction comparing the change in the y over the change in the x. And this little symbol, this triangle, means it's just like a, it's like a Greek letter, um, and it stands for change in y over change in x. It's just like a shorthand, an abbreviation. All right, so if I look at my rate of change here, if I wanted to find the rate of change here for this problem, I would list how much did y change? Okay, it changed by 12. How much did x change? It changed by one. And it did that every time. Okay, so here it went from 12 to one, here it was 12 to one, here it was 12 to one. So if the rate of change is always the same for each of these, then this number or this relationship is linear and will graph as a line. Okay, we can just write that as 12. Okay. All right, so then let's look at these um, other examples. And it says, determine whether the relationship in the table represents a linear relationship and explain. All right, so we're gonna compare the change in the x's and the change in the y's. So from here, from zero to five, this went up by five, okay? And then from five to 10, it also went up by five. And from 10 to 15, it went up by five. Okay, so now I need to compare that to the change in the y. So from 20 to 16, now this actually didn't go up it went down, so I'm gonna use a negative to show that it went down four. Okay, and then 16 went to 12, so it also went down four, and I'm just subtracting to figure that out. And then 12 minus eight also went down four. So is there a constant rate of change? Yeah, every time X went up five, Y went down four, all right? So I would say that this definitely has a constant rate of change, and that I'm trying to determine if it's linear. If it has a constant rate of change, then it's linear. Okay, and why is that? Yes, constant rate of change. Okay, and what is that constant rate of change? It's the change in the y, so the negative four, over the change in the x, the five. So negative four over five, negative four over five. This was always the same, okay? All right, look at two, number two. If I look at the change in x, it went up by two, it went up by two, and it went up by two. Okay, when I look at the y, it went up by two, 
2 to 8 goes up by 6, two, 8 to 16 goes up by 8. So is this relationship linear? This is not linear. Why is it not linear? There's not not linear because there's not a constant rate of change. It wasn't always the same. Okay, if we look at the rate of change here the first time, y over x was 2. The change in y was 2 over 2. The second time, the change in y was 6, and the change in x was 2. Okay, and then the third time, the change in y was 8, and the change in x was 2. Okay, so these did not stay the same. They're not equal. So this is not linear. All right, look at the next one. You have a change from 0 to 3, that's 3. From 3 to 6, that's 3. And then from 3 to or 6 to 9, sorry, that's also 3. Okay, to go from negative 3 to 9, that's going up by 12. 9 to 21, if you're not sure, subtract 21 minus 9 would be 12. So this is also 12. And then from 21 to 33, if I subtract those, I also get 12. Okay, so is this linear? And you could say, yes, it's linear. Okay, and why is it linear? There's a constant rate of change. Okay, and what was that constant rate in change? Okay, it was the change in y, the 12, the y always goes on top, over the x, which was 3. Okay, so it was 12 over 3 each time, 12 over 3. Now, there are some cases, all right, where it may not always be 3, 3, 3, and 12, 12, 12. Okay, it could have, let's say it had gone up by... Um, Let's see, let's say the next one is 15, and this one is 57. Okay, so in that case, this would go up by six, and this would go up by, if I do 57 minus 33, I get 24. Okay, so at first glance, you may think, oh, this is not linear, it's not constant. Okay, but look at what you get. So if I have 12 over three, and 12 over three, and 12 over three, and then I get 24 over six, you may think, Mm, nope, not constant. But what do they all simplify to? 12 over 3 simplifies to 1, 4, right? Because 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this is 4 and this is 4. But what's 24 divided by 6? Also 4, right? So this also has a constant rate of change, right? It just kind of doubled in this last set of points, all right? So you have to check and make sure it doesn't simplify to the same thing. But a lot of times it will just be the same. So then it's easy. All right, let's look at a graph. You can also use a graph to determine a constant rate of change and decide if a relationship is linear. Well, on a graph, it's pretty easy to tell if something's linear, because does it graph as a line? Well, this is definitely linear. Okay, it's making a straight line. Um, so when I look at the change, okay, the constant rate of change, constant rate of change, if it's linear, it has to have one, a constant rate of change. Okay. So, the change in y, how much did it go up? It went up 10, and then how much did it go over? It went over 1. Okay, and then to get to the next point, it went up from 10 to 20, that would be 10. It went over 1, 1 to 2, so that would be 1. Okay, and then it went up 10, and went over 1. So again, 10 over 1. This went up 10, and went over 1. So again, 10 over 1. So it's linear because that constant rate of change. Then it asked me also, what does the point 1, 10 represent? So that would be this point right here. So what does that really mean? It means for in one week, Daniel saved $10. Okay, so the point 1, 10 means that, um, just what we said, Daniel saves $10 per week, or in one week, every week, he's saving $10. Okay, all right, let's keep going. A square has a side length of s inches. Use a graph to determine if the relationship between the side length and area of the square is a linear relationship. All right, so they've given us a table, but we have to complete it. So in the length of a square, well, first of all, how do you find the area of a square? So let's say this is a square. So that means both sides are the same. So I can say um, these are both s. 
And the area is the length times the width, or the base times the height, or the side times the side. Right? So if the length of the side is 1, then the area is going to be 1 times 1, or just 1. Okay? When the length of the side is 2, then the area is 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay? When it's 3, it's 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 times 4 would be 16. 5 times 5 would be 25. Okay, so these are the points I'm going to use. This is still X and Y. It's just written sideways. Um, all right, so then I'm going to plot my points. So I'm going to go over 1 and up to 1. So that would be just barely above 1. And then I'm going to go over to 2 and up to 4. 3 to 9 would be a little more than 8. 4 to 16. And 5 to 25 is just above 24. All right, so if I connect these points, are they making a straight line? They're making more of a curve, aren't they? This is not linear. Okay, and if you're not sure if it's linear or not, then compare the change, the rate of change. How much did it go up? Okay, this went up by one every time. So if this is going to be constant, then these better go up by one every time. Okay, but 1 to 4 is 3, and 4 to 9 is 5. Okay, it's not linear. There's not a constant rate of change. Okay, and you can see that when it's not a constant rate of change, you won't get a line. Oops, sorry. Not a constant rate of change. All right, look at the next one. Sarah ordered shirts for the track team. Each shirt costs $4 plus $15 shipping. Each or use a graph to determine if the relationship between total costs and the number of shirts is linear. Okay, so she buys one shirt that's four dollars, but then she also has to pay fifteen dollars in shipping. All right, so that's a total of nineteen dollars. If she buys two shirts, then she'll pay two times four, which is eight, plus fifteen, which would be twenty-three dollars. If she buys three shirts, then that's three times four, which is 12, but she's still got to pay shipping, so 15, 12 plus 15 would be 27, and if she buys four shirts, four times four is 16, plus the $15 shipping charge would be 31, okay? All right, so then if I graph these points, I have one and 19 would be right under 20, two and 23 is right under 24, 3 and 27 is under 28, and then 4 and 31. So these are going up by 4, 24, 28, 32. So 31 would be right below there. Okay, and you can see if I connect these points, right, these are definitely forming a line. Okay, so this looks linear to me, but again, if I'm not sure, then compare the rate of change, right? These are going up by how much each time? Your X is going up by 1. And your Y is going up, how much is it? From 19 to 23 is 4. From 23 to 27, 4. 27 to 31, 4. All right, it's linear. There is a constant rate of change. And remember, constant rate of change is written as the change in Y. Is the change in Y over the change in X. So if the change in Y is 4, the change in X is 1, and that should be the same each time, or should simplify to the same thing each time. So this one's linear, has a constant rate of change of 4 over 1. Okay? All right, that's constant rate of change. See you soon.